Georgia Tech's 2019 season was filled with a few highs and a lot of lows. A high would be somehow upsetting Miami on the road. A low would be losing to the Citadel at home and finishing 3-9. and nine. So the question going into 2020 is will this year provide more highs for the Yellow Jackets or will it be just about the same as last year? Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, the best kept secret in all of college football. Today, bringing you our 2020 Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets college football predictions. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos. It's our final team in the ACC. We've got a recap to go, and then we move on to another Power 5 team. And as always, check out everything down in our description below where you can get exclusive content on our website, thegridironexpert.com, as well as follow us on all of our social media pages over on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So you look at Georgia Tech last year, guys. We knew it was going to be a rough season for them. Jeff Collins steps in for Paul Johnson, who had done so well with Georgia Tech for so long, running that option offense, and Collins came in to try to change the scheme to more of a pro-style offense. And the results were bad. Georgia Tech does return 10 starters offensively this year, but it's from one of the worst offenses in the nation. They ranked 127th out of 130 in total offense. They averaged just 16.7 points per game. Their red zone scoring rate was the worst in the country, as the Yellow Jackets only got points 60.71% of the time when they were in the red zone. So many things that have to be fixed offensively for Georgia Tech, and they're still in the midst of a major rebuild and a major adjustment. They do return, though, their quarterback, James Graham, who threw for over 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns last year to go with 290 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns. But, of course, the leader for Georgia Tech is going to be their running back, Jordan Mason, who had 899 yards and seven touchdowns, and luckily for him, his offensive line is bigger and better than they were last year. When you look at their defense, we know that's Jeff Collins' strength. We know that's his forte. Focuses on defense, and he more than likely, or always really, focuses on the back seven, specifically the secondary. They allowed 32.4 points per game last year, but are running that 4-2-5 defense. And the back seven will be strong this year because they ranked 36th in the country in their passing defense last year. They returned seven starters total, including Charlie Thomas and Trace Willing in that secondary. So this defense should take a little bit of a step forward, and the offense really should take a little bit of a step forward. But can it translate into wins with an absolutely brutal schedule? Non-conference games against Georgia, Notre Dame, Clemson, and UCF and a road game at North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Pittsburgh. Schedule does Georgia Tech no favors. Can Jeff Collins' squad at least get a few more highs after winning two conference games in 2019? They kick off the season against Clemson. Loss. I mean, come on, guys. We know it's going to be an L here. Not many teams, if any teams at all, are going to defeat Clemson. And yes, while their secondary is going to be strong for Georgia Tech, it's going to be no match for the greatest quarterback in college football right now, Trevor Lawrence. So they faced off against Clemson last year in the season opener and fell 52-14. to They'll be lucky, I think, to score 14 points again this year at home. They fall to the Tigers in Week 1. No surprise there on a Thursday night. They beat Gardner-Webb in Week 2. Of course, we cannot mark that down as an automatic victory because of the uh, <coughs> Citadel lost last year. But Georgia Tech is now 1-1 one and one going into Week 3. They take on Central Florida. That's not a good non-conference game, guys. This is a Central Florida team that averaged 43.4 points per game last year. And while everybody wants to focus on how great the passing game is, led by Dylan Gabriel, you cannot overlook the three-headed monster they have at running back and Greg McRae, Otis Anderson, and Bentavious Thompson. This UCF team is very, very good. They open up the season against North Carolina, 
That's a story for another time. But you look at Georgia Tech, we mentioned how decent their passing defense was. Their rushing defense was abysmal. They allowed 215.3 rushing yards per game. I just don't think Georgia Tech's defense is any match for this UCF offense. You want to shut down Dylan Gabriel, slow him down, that's fine. They've got three very capable running backs that are going to kill you either way. So they lose to Central Florida here. And unfortunately, they lose to a team that's very similar offensively to the Knights in North Carolina. They only lost to the Tar Heels by 16 last year, 38-22. to But now they have to go on the road to Chapel Hill to face off against a Tar Heels team that has 10 returning starters offensively, led by another fantastic sophomore quarterback in Sam Howell, the defense that allowed less than 24 points per game. Really, I just don't think Georgia Tech is any match here. Georgia Tech will benefit in the games that are relatively low scoring. And to do that, they're either going to have to face a team that does not have a great offense, or they're going to have to face a team that both have very great defenses, and Georgia Tech's defense is going to be the one that has to step it up more than the other. So that's where Georgia Tech can get their wins. That's why their win over South Florida last year was 14-10. to I believe the NC State game was just 16-10. to They were not high-scoring games. Miami was just 28-21. So that's the key for Georgia Tech, and Clemson, Central Florida, and North Carolina will not provide that for the Yellow Jackets. They played Virginia Tech right after the loss to North Carolina on the road, and last year at home in Atlanta, they fell to the Hokies 45 to nothing. It was a shutout, and Bud Foster is now gone, but I mean, come on, that's not going to make a big difference. That doesn't make or break this game here, and Justin Hamilton, I think, will do a very good job filling in for him as the new defensive coordinator down in Blacksburg. Virginia Tech returns 19 starters this season, guys. 19 starters. They are a legitimate coastal title contender. They are one of the most experienced teams in the country. And Hendon Hooker will certainly be a very difficult test as a dual-threat quarterback going up against this Yellow Jackets defense. So they're 1-4 four now going into their bye week. We knew it was going to be rough. We knew that Georgia Tech was still going to have some growing pains in year two under Jeff Collins. They get a bye week sitting at 1-4, and four, going into their Virginia game here. This is a winnable game for the Yellow Jackets because last year, with a better Virginia team, Georgia Tech only lost to them 33-28. to I think that was a game that surprised a lot of people. It was on the road. It was against Bryce Perkins and the Cavaliers, who ultimately won the Coastal Division, and they only lost by five. I think that surprised a lot of people. Now you look at it this year, Virginia does not have Bryce Perkins. They've got to find themselves a quarterback, whether that's Brennan Armstrong, Keaton Thompson, whatever Bronco Mendenhall chooses to go with, they're going to take a step back offensively. Defensively, they have nine starters returning. This game fits the mold as what we said. A game where either the offense isn't that great or it's going to be a very strong defensive battle. I think that's exactly what this is. Two very solid defenses, or Virginia's defense going up against an improving Georgia Tech defense, but off a week of rest with the game at home after only losing by five last year was the worst team that they're going to have this year, and Virginia having a worse team this year than they had last year, that was a lot to comprehend, but Georgia Tech gets the win. They get a conference win right here on October 17th. They are now 2-4, and four, and they just snagged a win over the reigning Coastal Champs. They then go on the road to face off against Pittsburgh, a team they only lost to by 10 last year. So they held their own against a Pittsburgh team. Again, that game fit the mold last year of a Pittsburgh team that really wasn't that explosive offensively, but their defense was pretty dang good. And Georgia Tech was still going through too many growing pains in year one that they weren't able to capitalize off of a relatively low-scoring game. This year, Pittsburgh takes a big step forward. This year... Pittsburgh defensively is going to be just as good. And offensively, if Kenny Pickett can turn that corner with offensive coordinator Mark Whipple, they have a chance to win the Coastal. The game is at Pittsburgh. Georgia Tech better watch out with their offensive line. This is a dangerous pass rush they're going up against. But I do believe they fall to Pitt. And I do believe they fall to Syracuse as well. A Syracuse team that, yes, loses a lot defensively. He loses a lot on the defensive side of the ball. But their problem last year was their offensive line. That's going to improve, which will allow Tommy DeVito to get more time in the pocket, to get balls out to Taj Harris and his wide receivers. A Syracuse team that missed out on the postseason last year 
should get back to it this year, and it's at the Carrier Dome. All those factor in to a Syracuse victory. So right there, you're looking at Georgia Tech with six losses, meaning that if they want to somehow sneak into the postseason, they have to win the remaining four games against Duke, Notre Dame, Miami, and Georgia. And those final three games, guys, are just absolutely brutal. I mean, that the schedule scheduling did not do them any favors this year. You look at this Duke game, though, kicking off November. What Jeff Collins understands, what he understood when he took this job was, we're not going to contend immediately. We're not going to go contend for the Coastal or an ACC title immediately. But every single week, we can improve. We can get better. We can learn our schemes. So by year three or year four, we can actually start contending for the postseason and making noise in this ACC conference with a brand new, with a brand new offense. Okay, everybody was so used to that option offense for so long. Key word I just mentioned in that whole long spiel was improving every single week. They improve every single week, and they snag a win here over Duke, a team that will be led now, of course, by Chase Bryce, a team that did defeat Georgia Tech 41-23 to last year. But again, another key number to look at here, we criticized Georgia Tech's rushing defense when we talked about UCF. Now we're going to criticize Duke. Duke's run defense allowed 180.6 rushing yards per game last year. This is a perfect opportunity for Jordan Mason and maybe James Graham to utilize his wheels a little bit to get some big plays, some big chunks of yard against this Duke defense. It'll be strong in the secondary, but maybe not so much in the front seven. Now, I think the Yellow Jackets snagged their second conference win of the year against Duke. Both of those conference wins coming at home. Final three games of the season, Notre Dame, Miami, Georgia. I think we all know we're going with this, and I don't mean to overlook any of them, but loss, 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 and we'll kind of break it down briefly. Notre Dame, of course, the game being played in Atlanta at the beautiful Mercedes-Benz Dome, as we all know, state-of-the-art stadium, one of the best in the nation. So it'll be a kind of a cool neutral site game going up against the Fighting Irish, but I don't think that the Yellow Jackets stand much of a chance in this one. Ian Book returns at quarterback, one of the best in the country. You're looking at a Notre Dame defense that allowed less than 18 points per game last year. Maybe Ian Book struggles a little bit in the air because he doesn't have as many pass catchers as he did last year, at least by experience measures. But I think he will have built as much chemistry up as possible here. The only thing that will benefit Georgia Tech here is that the week before Notre Dame plays Clemson. And if Notre Dame does lose to Clemson, as many project they will, even though it is in South Bend, maybe they're hungover, and maybe the Georgia Tech defense jumps out early, forces a few three and outs, forces a few turnovers. They jump out to an early 7, 10, 14 point lead, and maybe never look back. That's the only thing that Georgia Tech could have going for them on November 14th, but I still don't think it's enough. The Miami game. Yeah, they upset the Hurricanes 28 to 21 last year in Miami. I, think, I, don't, I really don't think anybody still knows how that happened. But you know revenge is on Manny Diaz's mind. You know that revenge is on Miami's mind. And I think they're going to exact it in a big, big way. The offensive line will drastically improve for Miami after they were one of the worst in the country last year. If De'Eric King pans out, De'Eric King lives up to his hype, the transfer quarterback from Houston, you will see Miami's offense take a major step forward and the defense will not take a step back. With Gregory Rousseau, Quincy, Quincy Roche uh, on the, along the defensive line, a defense that ranked 13th in total defense last year, Miami, as long as their quarterback play improves, could see a two- to three-game increase in the win column. One of those wins comes against Georgia Tech. And then Georgia, come on, guys. They're facing off against the Bulldogs team here. They've lost the past three to the Bulldogs, 135-35. to 35. They've been outscored by 100 points over the past three games against their in-state rival, and that included a 52-7 loss to them last year. Georgia is a college football playoff contender. They have arguably the best defense in the entire country. Jamie Newman is in at quarterback, or maybe it's JT Daniels. Who knows? But regardless, the defense is going to carry them over the course of this season as one of the best, and as long as they find a capable quarterback to kind of get going with those somewhat inexperienced wide receivers, Georgia will be just fine, and they certainly will against a struggling Yellow Jackets squad with the game in Athens. So, we've got Jeff Collins in year two going 3-9 and nine yet again. 
That means he's six and 18, two years in to his tenure at Atlanta. But you look at this. This, this is a very simple. This is the exact same record they had last year in the in the season. We have going the exact same way as they had last year. We have them snagging a non-conference win early in the season, and we have them winning two conference games. It's exactly what Georgia Tech had happened to them last year. And that's very disappointing for some fans, I know. It's very frustrating for some. Because usually when you see 17 starters returning for a team, you think, man, they're going to be really good. People need to watch out. But they're still going through a lot of growing pains, guys. When you do that drastic of a change in offensive and defensive schemes, it takes time. I firmly believe that Jeff Collins is the right man for the job. And I firmly believe that in year three, they're not going to go three and nine. Year three... They're going to win more conference games and will be contending for a spot in the postseason. But for right now, Georgia Tech struggles again in year two. They're much more competitive. They snag two quality conference wins. But Yellow Jacket fans just have to continue to be patient. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share all of our prediction videos as we continue to progress through every single Power 5 team. Check out everything down in our description below for exclusive content on our website, thegridironexpert.com, also on our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.